benchmark in 40 foot production cruisers. We're on board the various new C42. We've got a punchy 20 plus not day here in the Solent to put it through its paces. So this is what a Bavaria cruiser looks like, right? It's got the rounded transom and hull shape, the pointy bow. This has worked very well. This, these, the 34 and 37, not old designs. But look what they look like now. Welcome to the new generation Bavaria. The first Bavaria with chines, designed by Gazuti Yacht Design. That chine is brought all the way aft to this angular transom, uh, combined with loads of beam back here as well. A shape we're used to seeing perhaps on ocean racing boats, but used to very good effect here. And the other thing it combines with, you see how that the chine also, as well, as well as giving a powerful hull shape with plenty of space back here for, for the aft cabins, you get the flat surface for these large hull windows. And then look at the forward end. Look how much volume is incorporated into the bows. And that really is a bit of a game changer now because if you can see how bluff that bow is and how much volume there is up at the top but you will certainly see it inside so this bow sprit that's the two that's the 42 part of the 40 foot so this is really a 40 footer because this is where the boat really starts and you'll see what it gets you down below unfortunately our sail trial was cut short a little bit uh, we were promised forecast said 15 to 23 and we what we saw was was more in the high ends of the 20s um, and it just we had some great sailing in some some fairly choppy classic solent wind against high conditions uh, and the boat behaved really well but the rig new rig hadn't settled down properly so the rigging went a bit loose so that needs to be tightened up um, but we still got a good a good trial on on most angles of sail uh, with the white sails um, so this boat is rigged within mast and self tacking but the take homes from sailing were an easy boat to sail fast she, she gets up to speed quickly which is powerful uh, and enjoyable to sail I mean particularly I think enjoyable because you'll notice here there's emergency steering access for a single rudder yes it's a single rudder we're so used to seeing twin rudders on these uh, wide aft beam hull shapes these days uh, particularly on chine boats and yes they have their place but it was really nice to have a single spade rudder it's not too deep it gave plenty of feedback let me know when the boat was pressed and indeed maneuvering it back into a tight tight marina spot so why do I say, ask if this is a benchmark 40 footer now? Because I think what Bavaria has done is, bear in mind that this is the first boat really to new design to come out as, of the company since it was rescued. It, uh, it's learned from what the others have done, what, what the likes of Hansa, Geno and Beneteau, particularly those group Beneteau boats have done with their hull designs and having that full volume forward um, and taking some of the best bits of those and adding their own take on them. So you look at the cockpit design here, they've brought these, these pedestals right aft to give maximum room to the cockpit benches. So you get this generous cockpit space, whether it's going to be used privately or for charter. Seat six, probably even eight around this table. Nice deep combings, good protection there and unusually stick with the more conventional approach of having the, the coach roof winches as standard.
these winches here are optional. You can have an aft set of winches. So those co the compass would move to the, the place on the aft of the table there. And then you can have aft winches there if you wanted to have German lead main sheet. So the main sheet at the moment you'll see it's, it's on a bridle midships here, slightly forward of. Um, and that leads forward and then back with the rest of this running rig in to one of the companionway winches. So you end up sharing those winches. It's a self-tacking jib, but it's still sheeted here. Um, so there's quite a lot going on on this companionway winches. If you did want to have that option for being able to let off the sheet from the helm, you'd have to go with those extra winches. As it is from the helm, it's, yeah, it all works well. You've got good vision forward over a low flat coach roof and good direct steering as i said this is very short linkage from here and i'll open up this locker now so you can see it so this aft hatch lifts between the helms and there you have the quadrant and the autopilot attached very easy to connect your emergency steering through there as well and nice direct jeffer steering These helm seats lift up each side. They're actually optional. You can see it's just a manual. Drop down bathing platform there and then port aft the locker. Just on the aft port side this is. Moving up onto the side deck, you can go either side of the helm and you see good wide side decks could be grippier this molded in non-slip but uh, a good sort of little bulwark with tow rail there gives a feeling of security and although the coach roof is fairly low and flat you get a nice long handrail along it and the benefit of that flat roof I think is more for the warmer weather sailors who can have put their sun cushions out on those as well see the option for Genoa track in board there standard setup self tacker again slightly unusually these days to see the running rigging all exposed easy to get at it sort of makes sense on this size boat really see plenty of good size flush hatches interior light this bow sprit bolted on with bow roller contained within it and then a compact sail locker in here it's sort of quite a tight entrance for it which is going to obviously reduce the potential of what you can store in here especially if you wanted to have a sail in a sail locker um, but you know, size is okay, you can get your fenders in there absolutely fine and then obviously you've got the windlass and, and chain locker forward. Notice how nice and long this companionway hatch is. So you get plenty of light down in here and shallow entrance into the interior. I did do a walkthrough of this interior at the boat show at Dusseldorf. This one has the darker walnut, I think it is, Alpi trim, whereas the, the one from Dusseldorf was a nice light oaky colour. Anyhow, why do I say this is potentially or arguably the benchmark 40 footer now? Perhaps because you can see the amount of volume you get here. Big cabins, big saloon. And this starts at 157,900 euros. That is, when you look at the direct competition, between five and 15 grand cheaper, really. So Hansa 418, starts at 163 the oceanus 40.1 at 170 in the sun odyssey 
one four ten, I think one hundred seventy two. All very very good competitors, but just I mean, there we go. There's that volume you're getting from the bow shape. Huge forward cabin, big generous saloon, sofa area as well, and this one two double cabins. And again, look at the beam back here. Now, the competitors also have plenty of space, but in terms of what Bavaria's done, they've raised the game. They, you know, let's have a, a look at a few of the details, but in terms of finish quality and engineering, they've produced a very inviting package here. Good grab handle here, it's fairly standard, conventional, really L shape galley. Stowage is fine, you've got a front opening fridge here lift top tops to, to stowage or I guess extra cold stowage there and then the bank of three top down lockers uh, and a nice bank of soft closing drawers there with a bin under the sink. These panels, sole panels, you can see the ones that are cut out here will lift on suckers but you'll notice there's no creaking as I'm walking around. The solid feel to the furniture. I cannot understand why people use uh, these 90 degree edges. Uh, I was told that the production models probably wouldn't have this on the C42, but um, you know, it's just not practical, obviously, on a sailing boat to be able to fall against hard edges. That aside, the styling has been done well. Plenty of headroom here. You see all the natural light pouring through. The deck step mast means you just got the post here. Plenty of space around the saloon area and you can see you actually get a proper size saloon table. It's practical to work, lifts right over and there you can sit six, probably more, around that table. So like the cockpit you can seat a proper amount of crew with everyone in comfort. Comfortable cushions, a small amount of stowage below, this has actually got a reverse cycle aircon in there so that takes up a bit of the room below but nice lighting dedicated nav station of sorts up here nice and compact lift top get a chart stowage forward and then the uh, switch power switchboard is actually just back there you need to unscrew it to get any access to the wiring there and you can notice this bank of lockers that runs around the galley and the saloon, and then moving into this huge forward cabin. Keeps headroom six foot two, six foot three, right up to the berth here. And rather than going for any sort of island thing, they've just gone for one big bed that you can roll around on there. Lots of natural light again, sit forward on that headboard, big hatch natural light above it or look out the windows. And then if you don't have the uh, ensuite, so you can have three cabins with one head, like this one, three cabins with two heads. So I would obviously probably have that extra heads which would go in here and you would lose that wardrobe. You'd still get the same amount of stowage this side. And then moving aft, single heads, so fairly compact entrance area and that's because the heads shares the wet area of the shower which means you get uh, the option you know for standing shower or seated on the angled heads and keeps the wet area all in one. These companionway steps all lift, good access into the engine room so there's your engine battery at the base, access panels either side. The insulation's not the thickest, it was actually the exhaust uh, ventilation in the cockpit which is quite loud, I think that could be, could be addressed. But great access, this is the standard 40 Yamaha impeller, oil tank, fuel filters and then as I say you can come in from that side uh, to get at the gearbox oil. The after cabins are identical 
if you take two half cabins. If you just go for the two cabin version, then this side would be just stowage really, a, a pantry area, I think they call it. Otherwise, the format of them, a big double again, plenty of room in the quarters here. Lots of beam. Stowage in single wardrobe shelves. And there's that access panel into the engine, nice and tall. Uh, and one to get at the autopilot. And then one more panel aft to get into the, the wiring that's on the aft bulkhead uh, and at the rudder stock as well. Below the berth is just a tank, so there's no stowage there. So all in all, I think Bavaria's done a good job here. I think they've really stepped up their game. This is, and they have to really, this is a fiercely competitive market, 40 foot production cruisers. For 250 to 300,000, depending on options, all in, including tax, this is a lot of boat for the money. It sails well, it's fun to sail. It's designed, built and finished to a good standard for the price. If you want to see the walkthrough of the other version with the lighter interior, I will put it here or here. And otherwise, if you like the videos, click like, hit subscribe, and hope to see you next time.